Welcome to another edition of Preps Plus Extra. I'm Mark Stewart, prep editor of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Joining me is J.R. Ratcliffe, who's probably still recovering from the game of the century <laughs> this past week. Almost a century. Teams almost scored 100 points. That would have been game of the century officially. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to start off with, how are things going for you this week? They're going, they're going good. I think Oconomowoc and Wisconsin Lutheran just scored another touchdown. Got to see a crazy, crazy game on Friday night, 84-82. to 82. And like you said, still, still haven't quite wrapped my mind around what I just saw, but, uh, but definitely one for the ages. Yes, uh, in case... Uh, you all didn't hear about it, and it wasn't early season basketball out at Oconomowoc on homecoming night. They wouldn't have scored 84 in that <laughs> game either. <laughs> that might be the highest. We'll, we, down the road, we'll have to see what the highest scoring Wisconsin Little 10 basketball game is for yeah. uh, both those teams this uh, this year and see how it compares to the football. But uh, Oconomowoc snapped o Wisconsin Lutheran's 22-game Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin Little 10 winning streak with an 84-82 victory. <laughs> Uh, on Saturday, you were there for the blow by blow. <laughs> um, I know it might be a blur, but what what stands out to you about the whole? Thing. Well, what's funny and gets lost in the shuffle is how important this game was, just independent of the score. It was homecoming. There was a huge crowd on hand. Oconomowoc really came in. They hadn't beaten Wisconsin Lutheran since 2001, so they're still the underdog, still trying to prove that, that they can be that team right now with an undefeated record, that they can, they can hold on and win the Wisconsin Little Ten. Huge obstacle in Wisconsin Lutheran that they would have to beat the team that you know, three, three state championships since the merger and a, and a couple more times to the state title game. We're talking about one of the best programs in the state. And so this was a big win for Oconomowoc regardless. And, and the thing people keep asking me is, well, did anybody play any defense? And of course, I mean, of course the answer is no, because there, there were 166 points scored, which I think is 33 points more than the old record for combined scoring in a game. But there were some important plays on defense, and particularly at the end, Oconomowoc uh, needed to, to really slow down Wisco in a game that was back and forth, back and forth, of course, everybody scoring touchdowns in pretty much three plays or less. They really dragged out the last drive for Wisco, and, and Wisco needed, needed to score twice in a matter of four minutes and ten seconds and the last drive took too much time it was like 15 16 plays kind of got bogged down they did score but there were only 30 seconds left and uh onside kick was recovered and Cooney came away with a win yeah you know one thing from looking from afar that stood out to me about the game is you know last year you know Oconomowoc went into this Wisco game undefeated and got pounded like 48 to 6 and Friday they were down 14 points mm -hmm. at one point and that game could have gone you know you're probably thinking at that point in the game here we go again and you know it, I think it just shows you a little bit about you know the maturity that the, the added maturity that that Oconomowoc team had this year to to bounce back from that situation and really kind of you know come back and you know come back with uh, with uh, with a flurry. Coach Ryan McMillan talked about that going down early and how they saw the team kind of fall apart last year in that situation. This year they were down 14 points to Muskego in a non-conference game earlier in the year, so he said that kind of informed what they were doing, and it helped to have Canton Larson who really kind of. I would say arrived on the statewide scene as one of the top quarterbacks in the state. This is his third year as the starter. He had uh, almost 500 all-purpose yards, eight all-purpose touchdowns, threw for four, ran for four, had one right before halftime that was crazy, 51 yards with uh, with 20 seconds to go. He, he scored with seven seconds to go, so um, he really was the star of the game. And even though Wisco was piling up their own video game numbers, Canton Larson really stood out, put the team on his back, and, and in a game where the team that had the ball last was going to win, he made sure that they got a lot of points up on the board. Yeah, and, and speaking of Larson, I believe those numbers were for passing 295, uh, for rushing 198. Uh, mm -hmm. The numbers that, that jump out and in, are ingrained in, in my in my brain here. Uh, but speaking of Canton Larson, let's hear what he had to say as well as what what Coach Ryan McMullen had to say about the big win. I don't know what to say. That was a hell of an effort by both teams. You know, Wisco. They kept coming, they kept coming, we kept coming, and it was honestly I, the best game I've ever been a part of. I mean, it is. it was honestly the best game I've ever been a part of, and, you know, Wisco, you know, do, does what they do, and, you know, it was just a great game. It was a great game all in all. It was a great ball game. Our hats go off to Wisconsin Lutheran. They do what they do well, and uh, we do what we do. We, we at least think we do it well. We did it well tonight anyway. And uh, it was a shootout. We just kept playing. We knew it was going to be a, a dogfight to the end. The first 70 minutes, a lot of defense, and I think both offensive sides made adjustments and then got to what they wanted to. We didn't know it would get to that, but we always joke about scoring 90 or scoring whatever we got to score. Um, and we, we just had to keep making adjustments on offense. And again, their special players kept making special plays, and our special players kept making special plays as well. So again, I uh, didn't know it was going to go that way, but uh, you just got to roll with the punches sometimes in high school football. Well, shifting gears here a little bit, this 
this week is one of those weeks where there aren't a, a ton of huge games, uh, you know, uh, at least the parent games, uh, you know, on the schedule. Uh, but looking ahead a little bit, you know, there's the Woodland Conference is doing, you know, they've got a unique setup, you know, for their final two weeks of the regular season where they've done some things to really um, – Increase the the competitiveness, I would say, of the of the final final two games with with crossovers and a championship game. Uh, it's it's a, it's a pretty unique uh, unique thing they're doing uh, as far as statewide goes. Yeah, we got twelve teams at the Woodland Conference divided into two conferences or two divisions, I should say, West and East. Uh, so far, this is the second year of that particular layout. West is is by far the dominant con uh, division when it comes to football. Not necessarily the same layout for the other sports, but in football, West the Western side really has the top programs. Greendale and Pewaukee, in particular, have kind of separated themselves as the top two. New Berlin West, New Berlin Eisenhower is in there. Uh, Pius is in there. So so it's a good a good side to it. On the other side, you've got South Milwaukee, which has sort of separated itself as the top team. Brown Deer and Greenfield, who are going to play this week in one of the bigger games in the area. And what, what's going to happen in week eight is that they'll have a diagonal crossover. The number one team in one division plays number two in the other, the three and the four and the five and the six. That'll be a non-conference game. The following week, the ones meet in championship game like you talked about. The twos meet, the threes meet. That's a conference game. So what it does is for those teams that are already going to the playoffs, they're going to get a chance to face a really top flight team in the Woodland in preparation for it play for a conference championship if they're, if they're at this point South Milwaukee or Greendale. And mm -hmm. then uh, if you are a team that's kind of on the fringe, it's kind of a last ditch attempt to get into the playoffs with, uh, with one more win. Yeah, and, and the beauty of this, this setup is that it, it prevents, you know, every team has to play the teams in its division. But if you're one of those struggling teams in, in the past, if you were a struggling team and you were getting that random team from the other division, you could be a, a cut of hay going against a Greendale, which really does not neither team any good. Right. I uh, agree. Yep. And, and this with this setup, it's going to eliminate those those kind of matchups. And you like to say you'll just get the, you know, the the ones and twos playing each other, or threes and fours. And then next week we'll have the, you know, the championship game. And so that said, you know, I mean, as we look toward this week's games, you know, we got uh, Brookfield Central and Marquette is to me by far the, the, the game of the week. Uh, but beyond that, anything catch your eye with this schedule that maybe it isn't as apparent. Well, jumping back to the Woodland, that Brown Deer Greenfield game is really interesting. It's a battle for second place and and consider the gravity of that. The the winning team is going to go to the playoffs for sure. The losing team is going to need one more win to avoid that 500 record, which still might get them into the playoffs and in, actually last year definitely would have and in past years it's a pretty good likelihood, but you never really know how the playoff field is going to fill out how many 500 teams they'll need. So, it's yeah. important to have that winning record and so uh, the team that loses is really going to is definitely going to want that last win or face the, the uncertainty of being 500. And uh, so I, I think it, that's a really evenly matched battle and one that might be a little under the radar because it's not for, for first place in a conference like Brookfield Central Marquette, but still a very important game. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, a couple others along those lines come to mind. Uh, I know we talked about Waukesha South a couple weeks ago and they've sort of, you know, kind of, the schedule's been, hasn't been kind to them these past uh, couple of weeks, but they do play Waukesha South and I mean, Waukesha South plays Waukesha West on Friday, mm -hmm. and that's another matchup that you know, um, you know, Waukesha South, South still has a chance to you know make that playoff push. But obviously, they need to get this get this victory. Uh, another game that's probably even farther off the radar: um, Racine Lutheran and St. Thomas More play. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas More is five and one is on the cusp of getting to the playoffs for the first time since I think 2000. Four. Don't hold me to that, but that's what I remember. Having a very good year, Thomas Moore is in their in their new home, the Metro Classic. Yes, yes. So, so those those are two other games that you know we'll be kind of keeping our our eye on Friday night. And as always, we'll talk about it next week if it's worth talking about. All right, sounds yeah. good. We'll see you then. Yeah. So that'll wrap up another edition of Preps Plus Extra. For more Preps Plus action, be sure to watch me and Lance Allen every Sunday night on TMJ4. Take care.